Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back in with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series, a show in which I tactically break down and analyse and look at statistical facts about players which Arsenal have been linked to and are looking to sign this January window. Of course, we've we've looked at plenty of players, but as of yet, Arsenal are yet to make any sort of decision on any player. But that could be coming to an end because there's some very very interesting reports coming out of the Ukraine, suggesting that Arsenal could be in for a very young centre-back from Shakhtar Donetsk, which we're going to go into in a lot of detail. But before we crack on with that, first of all, please like the video if you're enjoying the series and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And if you would like to become a member and get access to lots of exclusive content, click that join button by clicking the link in the description below as well. But let's jump straight in and talk about our player, which, I mean, Mikolo Matavienko. I mean, Kenny Ken is going to have the best, and Lee Judges, to be fair, um, and Webby in some ways, because you know how he likes to pronounce his Ws. Um, but this could be interesting to see how all three of those guys attempt to pronounce uh, Matavienko. Um, 23-year-old Ukrainian international centre-back for Shakhtar Donetsk. Um, I could go on and wax lyrical about all the stuff I've read about him in the last five hours or so, but I thought it's much better for you guys to get a much more in-depth, in-the-know uh, breakdown of him. And that's why I have drafted in the help of Andrew Todos, um, who is a fantastic Ukrainian expert on all things from that side of the world. And so I'm going to hand over to him and he's going to give you all the latest on Matvienko. So, Mikola Matvienko, he's the Shakhtar centre-back and Ukraine international um, who's been linked with uh, Arsenal this week. Earlier on in this transfer window, he was linked with Man City after impressing in the Champions League against Pep's side. Um... What can we say about the player? Um, basically, he's really come into his own in the past 18 months. He was a fullback before that. Um, and then he's slowly been moved into the centre after his um, Shakhtar and Ukraine um, teammate uh, Yaroslav Rokitsky moved to Zenit. So he's been moved into the centre and now plays alongside his um, countryman and clubman as well, Krivtsov. So basically, they've got a bit of a sort of a dynamic between the two. Um, Krivsov's more of the enforcer, sort of the bigger, more bulkier defender. He goes in for the harder tackles, um, whilst Matvienko, who's got a bit of pace because he plays, because he's played out wide um, in the past, he's in there to sweep up behind, uh, getting those last ditch tackles. Um, and alongside the fact that he's played... Um, you know, as a fullback as well, he's got quite good distribution skills. So playing out the back um, into the centre of midfield, relatively straightforward for him. He's rather composed um, and, you know, he plays slightly more mature than he does for his years. Um, Andriy Shevchenko, the Ukraine national team manager, he's been quite a good um, coach for the for the player. Um, he's been he's helped him develop and he's the one sort of that thrust him straight into that uh, centre back role. Um First ever game for Ukraine at centre back against Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal. Clean sheet, nil nil. And uh he went on to play every single um every single game of Ukraine's Euro twenty twenty qualifying campaign where Ukraine finished top, conceded only four goals in those eight games. And um it looks like he's gonna have a sort of a big summer ahead of him as well. So it's probably a good thing that Arsenal are in for him now because um he'll probably be offered at a cut price. Um it's sort of not that often that a uh, Shakhtar Academy graduate makes it to uh you know out of the club. So this is sort of a rare occasion. Um it's still unproven whether he can do it in the Premier League. Might be a bit too physical um, just yet, but he'll take a bit of time to adapt, I think. But I think that he's got a lot of potential, especially under Arteta, who's um, worked with Pep um, in developing youngsters. I think he could um, be quite a snap bargain for Arsenal. Huge thank you to Andrew for helping us out there with the video. You can check out him on Twitter at Andrew Todos. And he has his own Ukrainian site, all English-based 
uh, called Zoya Londonsk, which is at Zoya Londonsk on Twitter. So please do go over and check that out. He's going to be running loads of stuff over the Euro 2020s and the Ukrainian side of things. And who knows if Arsenal get linked to any more Ukrainian league or Ukrainian based players, then I'm definitely going to be hitting Andrew up to get all the latest info because that's some really, really good breakdown regarding Matavienko. Now, You've come here for statistics, and trust me, you're going to get them. And let's start with our very, very well-trusted heat map. So you can see the heat map on the screen now. <clears throat> you can see their left-sided centre-back. That is the thing that Arsenal have been looking for for a long, long time, is someone to come in and play on that left-hand side. We know that William Salavu is coming in uh, in the summer after we signed him last season from saint Etienne. is a right-sided centre-back. They have high hopes for him. Who knows whether he comes straight into the starting lineup? I think that he probably has a big chance of doing that. And so we need to pair him with someone who's going to be on the left-hand side. We currently don't have any left-footed centre-backs. Um, and a left-sided player in Matavienko is definitely something that Arsenal have been after. So that is where he's like. You can see he pushes, actually, for a centre-back a fair few paces up the pitch. And as Andrew said, he used to be a full-back, so he is used to playing in that wider area and it has got a tendency to push. So maybe that would leave him out of position. But one of the key things is his distribution. And we're going to come on to his passing very, uh, in just a moment. First of all, though, let's move on to his defensive stats. 4.48 joules uh, per game with a 73.9% success rate in winning those, which is very, very decent. But the aerial joules is something for someone who's just ever so slightly under six foot, 2.73 joules per game, 57.1% of those are being won, which is decent for someone who's still under six foot. Jumping is obviously a very key factor in his game, which is good. Not really into the slide tackles much, but interceptions five per game for a centre back is very good. They're the sort of stats that you usually see for a, a deep line midfielder or a centre defensive midfielder more so than a centre back. So that's really really good spatial awareness uh, from the Ukrainian defender. Losses uh, five per game on average, not I mean, I'd say not loads. This is more down to him losing the ball in possession when he misplaces a pass. And it's the 59.6% in his own half, which is slightly concerning. But he is a centre-back, so if he is going to lose the ball, it is usually going to be in his own half where he does lose that possession. So maybe that's something that he needs to work on. He's not certainly someone that I think is going to be the next world beater, for instance. So that doesn't concern me too much at the moment. The successfulness of his duels and his interceptions is what I am looking to highlight a lot more as something that I think is a positive. Recoveries, though, is good. Just under 10 recoveries per game, 15.4% of them in the opposition half. We wouldn't expect that percentage to be too much higher considering he is a centre-back. Um, less than one shot being blocked per game, certainly something that he would add to his game under Arteta. We know that Arteta loves his defenders to get in and block those shots as much as possible and I think that that's something that definitely we would see an improvement in. He is clearing the ball more than twice per game, nearly three times, not fouling too much and actually quite a disciplined player, not receiving too many yellow cards and no reds whatsoever. Looking into the passing stats, passes 94% accuracy. Really, really good for a centre-back to get a solid pass accuracy in there. Plenty of passes being made as well. Long passes, 5.2 being made per game with just under 70% accuracy. Again, very, very good, very, very consistent. Definitely something that Arsenal would have been looking at in terms of distribution from the back. Can't pay too much attention to those through passes or crosses because he's a centre-back after all. But going into those passes into the final third, 84.7%. Something that we want from our centre-backs, and this is a very key stat for centre-backs, it's because David Luiz, Mustafi can play those passes into the final third, but sometimes they lose it. And to see that he's doing over seven of those per game with an 84.7% success rate, uh, rate sorry, is really, really good. Passes into the box, not going to expect too many of those, and that's why you can see that there isn't. Received passes is quite high at 53, showing that Shakhtar Donetsk like to utilise those centre-backs to be a, uh, a key part of their attack in terms of distribution. And that's certainly something that you would have to... Uh, understand and use if he was to come to Arsenal. Forward to backward pass ratio, massively skewed in an attacking favour, 27 to just under three. So, I mean, it's really, really good to see that his passing accuracy is really strong. Uh, I don't think we can have too many complaints there, and it's certainly something I think Arsenal will look at as a big bonus if they are to sign the Ukrainian international. Defensive side of things then, defensive duels for, uh, sorry, not defensive duels, attacking stats, um, shots, <clears throat> you're not going to expect him to have too many shots. In fact, the shots that you can see from the graphic there, he's, he's not taking too many. He has scored. Uh, I'm assuming that was from a corner. Um, I haven't actually been able to see the goal, but I'm assuming that there is one that is in the box. and He's up there for a corner. His every ability we've talked about already, which is good. A um, couple of shots from outside the box, but I can't assume that you would be seeing anywhere near as much as that at all, if any. He's going to be disciplined. He's going to be in his position, and that's really, really good to see. Dribbles. 
Again, not really taking that too many chances. He likes to get the ball and distribute it, which is really strong as well. Offensive duels being one, 0.88 is not really in the opposition half too much, so you won't see that much higher. When looking at a centre back, these attacking stats aren't really something you look at for a centre half. Full backs for sure, but centre halves not particularly. So, returning back to sort of listening and talking about where he fits in, I just think that he is someone that we need. And when I say he is someone, we pretty much need just a body now. Because seeing what Mustafi did against Chelsea, whilst, yes, he had a decent game for everything after the mistake that he made, but knowing that we could rely on someone else and having another body, another important member of the group at that position who's still got a lot of potential at 22, 23 years old, I think is something really, really key for Arsenal moving forwards. Please let me know what you think of the guy in the comment section below. I'm really intrigued to get your thoughts on if you think Arsenal should go for this guy. Apparently, I mean, his agent has come out and said a lot today. It could just be to drum up interest from other teams. He was linked to Manchester City, as Andrew said earlier in the window. Um, but I think there's there could be legs to this one. Really, really intrigued to see where it goes. I'm sure there'll be lots of discussion transfer shows around him. Um, so now you can be a little bit more educated as to what uh, Matavienko is like. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed the video, please drop a like on it. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and turn those notifications on so you never miss a show. And if you want to become a member, just click that join button to get access to loads of exclusive content. See you again very, very soon. And as always, up the Arsenal.